Hello guys, my name is Annabelle from Annabelle and Ben's Antics and yes we are in a different location but don't worry we still have a lot to cover from back in the UK before I introduce you to where I am at the moment. And one of the things I did while I was back in the UK was arrange a stocking swap with some other costumers. What this means is that we all made each other stockings and we're all posting them to each other just for funsies. The people joining in with this collaboration are Billy from Billy Matsunage, Maria from Historical Bell, and Marty from Scraps and Sequins, who I managed to pull out and whose stocking I need to make. And with that, let's have a look at what I did. So I have been browsing the internet for ideas and I have just found this. Someone please name me a costumer who wouldn't like to receive a Victorian boot stocking. So Marty, this is what we are doing for you. I have some colours picked out. We're going to be doing this black and blue. So what I'm going to do is expand this picture really, really big and then trace it onto this piece of paper. Also, this is currently in my house because I am packing to leave and we need a lot of projects to take with me. I began by getting the image I liked up on my computer and expanding it until I felt it would be big enough to hold some nice presents. Then I took some paper and traced that puppy out, roughly at least. Once the tracing was done I put it on the ground and smoothed out the lines, going over them with pen before getting the scraps of felt I had and cutting around it, adding seam allowance as I went. I then trimmed the pattern into pieces before cutting out each section in different scrap fabric I had left over from my various projects that I was prepping to take with me. These were then one by one pinned onto the stocking until it looked amazing. So now the stocking is all pinned, we need a machine to stitch it on. So this pattern is going to be available for you guys to download because I am essentially copying someone else's work and I don't know who to credit the original photo to, my apologies, but it is available for free on my Ko-Fi and if you wanted to drop a donation while you're there, your name will get embroidered on my next sewing project. Also because I'm moving guys, all my Ko-Fi money at the moment is actually going to be going towards my new sewing machine so that I can continue making these videos even though I am packing up my entire studio and will not have access to any of my things for probably at least the next year so please do donate if you do go over there it really helps me out and it means that I can carry on creating this amazing content for you. I love her she is looking so so good I I think I'm gonna have to make myself one of these. All of the fabric I'm using is scrap from projects which you guys will actually see later on because I am mass cutting out a bunch of projects to take with me and trying to get rid of the scraps by using them on smaller things. So this is from an aerial skirt, this brown thing is from an autumn dress and these stripes are from my Sally dress which actually you guys will have seen from there and then the felt is just random scraps that I had left over. I think I was giving them by someone, I can't remember who. It just looks cool, <laughs> I'm so so happy. Also the other thing I've done is the other day I went to the charity shop and we found these trims which are amazing. Wasn't sure what I was going to use them for but I have just put a thing on the discord asking people which one they think I should be using on this. If you guys want to also give your opinion on what trims or mostly buttons I'm using on my projects please do head over to the discord and join. I often host voting things over there so that you guys can have a say in my projects. Plus I really love chatting to you and a lot of you have very different opinions to me which leads to some interesting decision making. However for now guys I think I need to tidy up my house a little bit otherwise there is no way I'm getting anything done tomorrow. So I'm going to pop this away for this evening and we will resume again in the morning when the sun is hopefully shining bright. So our stocking is now looking like a very good Victorian boot but now we need the machine to sew it on and that my friends we're going vintage. So this machine, funny story behind it, I actually didn't buy this one, it was given to me, but like really, really randomly. So I went to work and I was telling people about my stuff that I do because this job that I have I had to declare all my social medias and I had to check all of them, which means someone at my office had to sit and watch all my YouTube videos to make sure that I wasn't an extremist or something, I suppose. And yeah, they decided to include the fact that I have a YouTube channel and do sewing in my work bio that gets sent out to every employee in the company because reasons and I need to be introduced apparently, I am just that special, which I'm really, really not. And as me and the other guys on my team are talking about this, I mentioned I have this obsession with vintage sewing machines and have a collection and that my husband really really hates it because I have a lot of them and this lady looks at me and she goes what kind of vintage sewing machines do you like and I'm like oh any really mostly singers but I also have a thing for Janome's because my main machine is a Janome and she goes I've got a machine in the back of my car you'd like I was just about to take it to the charity shop at which point I go oh really and she's like oh yeah hey come down you can have it and she gets this out of her car and I get it home and I'm looking at the case and I'm like oh I can give it to a charity shop when I'm done it'll be fine I don't need this disgusting thing and disgusting is one word for it except when I opened up the box which is really cool because it just unlatches like this guys it's a vintage genome so let's take a look at it and see if we can't get her working so firstly the front of the case comes off the case itself is definitely going to need to clean it it's so dirty it's actually ridiculous we have this case here, I believe, if we open this up, these are cams, which I had never heard of cams before this machine. I had to look up what these little plastic things were, but I'm very excited. This is essentially different stitches and you swap them out in the machine to get those different stitches. We then have an instruction book. This is a Janome New Home model 613 
or 804 and to be fair the book looks like it has just about everything I need in it so I'm gonna pop that here so that I can give it a read and now let's get out the machine herself so I think the first thing we need to do is give her a clean and give the box a clean and then we will see if she runs and if she doesn't run it looks like we're using my modern machine for this but we may as well have a vintage unboxing one anyway I hope this works I began by using heavy duty wipes to clean the front of the case and oh boy did it make a world of difference which is good because I'm not sure it would have made it through Australia customs otherwise. The rest of the box then got its damn scrub up and I even used some of my homemade Mod Podge to fix up some of the lining that was peeling off from the inside. Next I did the pedal and other accessories which also came up so nice before moving on to the machine itself. A quick wipe over had it shining and looking almost like new. Then it was time to do the mechanics. I am so glad it came with this book because dismantling it so that I could get to the feed dogs was a bit of a challenge but we got there and just look at all that hardware. It's rare these days that machines can be taken apart so easily so that you can see all of their insides and though I don't know how everything works I'll forever be impressed that some genius managed to throw a bunch of cogs together to make this thing. But as impressed I was it was dirty so out came my brush and all the lint and random bits of thread were removed before I followed the instruction book guide to oiling it. Just look at this beauty. I also need a name for her so please if you have any ideas leave your suggestions in the comments down below. Hello. Well, this is it. She is clean, threaded up and ready to go. Also, please excuse the mess in my house if you don't know I am moving in literally less than a week at this point, so everything is not organised because this needs to be finished before I go. <laughs> and now is for the moment. The moment we've all been waiting for. Will she or won't she sew? Let's plug her in and find out! I believe this machine is from the 1970s. She uses cams, which are these little plastic circles that tell the machine what stitch to do and for some reason does not work. Okay, so are we going to be able to do the fancy patterns that I wanted to do on this machine? No, I don't think so. I think there is something going slightly wrong, but I'm not sure what it is. However, the straight stitch works well enough that we can do that. So Marty, some of your stocking will have been sewn on a vintage machine and all the fancy stuff I'm going to do on my big one. <laughs> it's fine. I will get this working, but it's just a case of I need to have this packed up by the end of the day. And if I spend hours mending it now, that ain't going to happen, which would be a shame. So let's get the stocking and stitch the first part. And so I began trying to stitch the stocking. Trying being the main word there. I give up. I managed to do part of a heel. It doesn't even look good. I'm gonna unpick it and we're just gonna do it on a big machine. But hey, at least you guys got to see me unbox a new machine. I think it just needs some kind of repair. It seems to be losing power at certain stitches. So I'm guessing there's something inside that's a little bit loose. We're just gonna leave it. We're just gonna leave it. And I'm gonna deal with this when I unpack up my new house, which won't be for several months at the very least, and we are just gonna avoid this problem altogether. But yay, at least we made some progress on this, which I'm now gonna have to undo. So we got unpicking before I got distracted by packing up my house ready to move and then suddenly realized that I hadn't actually finished this. Oops. Okay, so we're gonna be using my mum's machine instead and we'll start by doing a slim zigzag around all the edges of the applique, beginning with the blue. The toe and the heel were done very quick and it was also super neat, which I'm a little surprised at because this was my first time using this machine and honestly, I had all of zero energy at the time. Next was the green front of the boot, which with all of its curves was a little bit more tricky, but we did get there in the end. After that, it was time for the bottom of the boot in black, which was the most frustrating as I am not sure what on earth was going on with that black thread, but it kept snapping on me and God, God damn it, why did this take so long? <laughs> okay, so I have finished this. It looks amazing. I really, really love it. I mean, the inside leaves a little bit to be desired, but eh, who's looking? Anyway, I'm such high and low for the backside of this stocking and I have lost it. So that's not great. So what we're going to do is I've actually got this black fabric, which is slightly padded. I've actually used it to make myself a laptop case for when I'm traveling. So I'm just gonna cut out a very rough stocking shape in this. We're going to applique the boot to this and then use this as the main stocking. And we're just gonna roll with it like that because I haven't got any other fabric in the house at the moment because everything has been packed. Laying out the applique boot, I pinned it in place and then cut around it onto the black fabric. Unfolding the padded black fabric, I then pinned the boot onto what would be the front side the stocking, arranging it in the center of the shape before pinning it on. I then realized that the padded fabric wouldn't fold over easy, so I would need some bias strips to go over the raw inside seams. So I got out my iron and some scraps from my vintage Snow White dress I'm currently working on and made a few lines of it. Does it match everything else? No, but it'll work. So I just thought you guys would like to see my current workstation. This is what happens when you are mid-move and have a sewing project that needs to be posted to someone else 
at Christmas. Yay! On the upside, the rest of my house is looking okay. So yes, if there is dodgy camera angles, this is why. I still hope Marty likes the stocking though. Taking the pin boot over to the sewing machine, I zigzagged around the entire outside edge to applique it on. I then folded the fabric so that the right sides were together and pinned it around the edge, making sure to include the bias binding. It looks a little bit weird when it was done, but honestly, it also works and is functional, so I'm not gonna complain too much. Plus, hopefully it'll need now after I've hand stitched the bias binding over the raw edge. This then all got stitched in place using my mother's machine and it was at this point I started to miss my own machine as this one seemed to struggle through all the layers of fabric I was asking it to stitch through. But we persisted and it did get done. A few days later I had officially moved out of my house and took over my parents living room to hand stitch this stocking at a ridiculous o'clock at night as I was going to be getting on a plane the next day and if you can't tell they had also just moved house a few days before and were definitely still in the unpacking stage. Once the inside seams were all covered in bias tape I turned over and pinned the top of the stocking before hand stitching that in place too adding a small ribbon at the top to hang it from. I really should have added the trim that you guys voted on the Discord for, but honestly, at this point, I had run out of time, so my apologies that I didn't use it. Then, at last, we were ready to turn the stocking the right way around, and oh my god, did it come out brilliant. I love it. Even if it didn't turn out exactly as I'd hoped, it is absolutely awesome, and I will definitely be making one of my own. And remember, if you want to make your own too, the pattern is available on my Ko-Fi page, free to download, and the link is in the description box below. And the stocking is done, which means the only thing we have left to do is fill it. Of course, the purpose of all Christmas stockings is to be filled with presents, so getting up early the next morning, I wrapped all these things that I'd grabbed for Marty from Orinoco, my favourite charity shop, and then parceled up the stocking itself before posting it off on my way to the airport. So that has now all been sent off to Marty, I can't wait to see her unbox it, and fingers crossed she likes it! Alright, so she said open the treats at Christmas, but I'm impatient, so we're opening them now. Buttons? Some sort of decoration? It's a little... It's a smart clip! little pouch, another little one. She like individually wrapped everything. Buttons! Oh cute little wooden ones. They're nice. Last one. Oh it's the American Girl doll pattern. Oh, I will have to make some of these. They're so cute aren't they? And now that we've sent off Marty's parcel it is time to open mine from Maria from Historical Bell. I am very excited about this. It arrived several days before I did because I have just flown over here. It's amazing. magic oh and it's got an a on the front how awesome is that guys and look at all the fringe so gorgeous a nice a for annabelle very well embroidered and then on the back side we have christmas's magic and anna and elsa who i have to admit are two of my favorite disney princesses the lining is all anna and elsa as well so cute it looks like there are some things in here See, I love your handwriting. Dear Annabelle, I hope you're having an absolutely magical time this holiday season. I made the stocking from themed fabric because from watching your channel, I know how much you like Disney and I think that the first video of you that I saw was the Anna Frozen Fever cosplay breakdown. Aw, that's nice. I really, really like it. It's amazing. And I love the fact that you based it on the first video that you ever saw of mine, which is super cute. And there is other things. Oh, they even put things in the stockings. Yes, it is before Christmas. No, I don't care. Oh, that's just gorgeous. It's a key on chain. Oh, I am going to wear that. That looks amazing. Thank you. Is it a fan? Oh, I'll need this. I think, yes, it is. It is a fan perfect because it is very hot right now. Oh, that's just gorgeous. I am actually going on a road trip, so I'm going to be taking this with me to fan myself in the Australian heat. Thank you so much Maria for your stocking and your awesome presents and thank you so much to Marty and Billy for also participating. I hope that everyone enjoys their stockings and I hope that you guys enjoy the videos. The playlist of all of our videos will be linked at the end of this one. Please do check it out because I think everyone's creations are amazing. I now I have received mine. I am going to go and watch all of the videos because I haven't actually done that yet. Otherwise guys, if you enjoyed this video, please do remember to like and subscribe so that you don't miss any other upcoming content. I know that with the move and my lack of Wi-Fi, my cosplay Christmas videos have been rather erratic this year, for which I apologise. Two years in a row, not great to not get all 12 videos up, but you're not going to be missing any because I actually pre-filmed nearly everything, so some of them we're saving till next Christmas, others we're just posting in the new year because we can get away with that. Of 
cool breeze it's amazing please leave me a comment down below telling me what you think of my stocking and what you think of this one the free download for my stocking pattern is available on my ko-fi and while you're over there please do check out the cosplay planner for which you can use code 12 days cosplay christmas for 10% off until next time guys have a beautiful day bye